Hi and welcome to this video about different types of genetic testing. And so one of the first types of testing um, that might be carried out is potentially if you're a carrier for a disease, and particularly if you're a carrier for a disease like cystic fibrosis. Um, what they'll look at is potentially if, um, for instance, if you've got a history of it within your family, um, you might decide to have um, a test to determine whether you're a carrier um, of this disease and so that you can make certain decisions um, later on about uh, you know, potentially um, children you might have or the decisions that you might take on the basis of this test. Um, early on um, when they did the first kind of um, genetic testing in people they were relatively expensive. Um, now the prices have dropped quite a bit, um, they're definitely more commonplace and so it's quite common for people specifically with genetic diseases within their family to have these tests done. Now genetic tests can not only be done to, to identify a certain person's genotype but they can also be done um, during pregnancy or you can have prenatal testing um, that's done. And one of the tests that they do is called amniocentesis um, and essentially what it does is it takes um, a sample of amniotic fluid which is the fluid that surrounds the baby um, during pregnancy. And what you can do there is from that from the amniotic fluid because it contains some of the baby's DNA they can therefore do the test um, for something like cystic fibrosis or another inherited disease and they can therefore determine um, whether that organ or whether that um, embryo is suffering um, from or going to suffer from any genetic condition or certain genetic conditions they can test for. It involves taking a sample of the amniotic fluid using um, a needle and they can do the test roughly around week 15 to 16. Um, they use an ultrasound um, to guide this. So they put an ultrasound uh, machine over the, oh, over the uterus and they therefore extract the fluid carefully ensuring that they don't cause any harm to the baby or any other areas uh, that they could potentially cause damage to. Um, the results usually take two to three weeks um, to produce. So with amniocentesis, it will be carried out um, by also using an ultrasound machine in conjunction um, with the needle or the syringe that takes the sample of the amniotic fluid. Um, there are some other complications. Um, with it, it poses a roughly around a 1% chance um, of causing a miscarriage or a pregnancy loss. There are some other issues with it, particularly leakage of amniotic fluid. You can, you can also develop um, amnionitis, so therefore an inflammation of that area vaginal bleeding and of course if you're not careful it can puncture the foetus um, with the needle. But one of the major drawbacks with the amniocentesis test is it can only be done late so from fi week 15 to 16 and if the results take two to three weeks to come in um, let's assume that you have it done on that week 15 or 16 that gives you till week 19. Um, pregnancies generally last 39 weeks and if for instance you were planning to if you get an positive result for a certain genetic disease that you might decide to have an abortion. Um, in the UK the kind of the legal age of abortion is up to 24 weeks if you meet certain criteria and so it doesn't leave you a huge amount of time. Um, so another test that can be done is called the chorionic villus um, sampling or CVS as it's sometimes known. And so it's where you take a sample of cells, um, it's a reasonably invasive um, procedure where it takes a sample of cells and from this section here called the chorionic villus and again this will contain um, some of the genetic material from the um, developing embryo. With this test um, you usually can have it done slightly earlier um, so it can be done at 8 to 10 weeks um, and the results come quite quickly so within a week in some cases um, for certain things that they can test for um, they can get the results near enough straight away the major drawback with um, the chorionic villus test is the fact that it has a high rate of miscarriage, so a high rate of loss of pregnancy, um, so anywhere from two and a half to four um, to nearly five percent. And so these risks need to be weighed up before you decide which of the two tests that you have, or indeed if you don't have those two tests at all. Now there are other tests available, um, and obviously. Um, when having these tests your doctor will be able to give you relevant advice about which one's better for testing for certain conditions, um, which one's best suited to you. Um, but in general um, the difference between um, the amniocentesis and the chorionic villus is the time at which you can take it 
and also um, the risk of miscarriage. And so you can take the amniocentesis later, but it has a lower risk of miscarriage. With the CVS, you can take it earlier, but there's a higher risk 